my name's Jo and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from the UK. Um, I'm really excited and extremely privileged to be joining you today to um, share with you a project which I've made. Um, I have been um, extremely excited because I've been invited by the Creating Kindness design team to feature as their guest designer for the month of November. Um, I'm really excited about this because um, I only started doing videos when we went into lockdown back at the end of March this year, so it's about six months ago now, and um, I'm still learning. I'm, I do enjoy sort of sharing projects that I do with you, um, and particularly today, um, the subject of the hop today is gift packaging. Now, I'm a great lover of gift packaging. I love to make things for... Um, holding small gifts to give to somebody so that could be some chocolates or a candle or, or something um, but what I like doing more than anything is to create in packaging for something that I've purchased so um, for example if I purchase uh, say some nice jams or something I'd like to then create a nice box for those jams to go in which actually fit them perfectly so um, today that's what I've done I've created this box here now this is using um, our beautiful designer series paper called Brightly Gleaming and this was actually from last year this paper um, which returned this year but it, I'm so glad it did because it's a really beautiful um, paper it's just exquisite with all the foiling and everything that's on it it's got some really beautiful designs so I'm so glad that returned and it's quite got quite a sophisticated feel to it for what is quite a sophisticated present inside so if I take the lid off here and you can see inside we have um, a wine bottle and we have some chocolates and if I just remove the wine bottle there you can see that it rests in this little section in here and it has a little rest for its um, the neck of the actual bottle so that it doesn't move around so once it's in there it doesn't really go anywhere and then I've popped Ferrero Rocher in here but you could equally put some other types of chocolates if you wanted to um, it's entirely up to you it's just an idea of, of how you can present this for a present for somebody um, and I thought it was a really nice sort of little gift for a neighbour or a friend or, or anyone really so this is what we're going to make I'm going to be using the same papers today um, although I am going to be using um, some different coloured papers that are in the same pack um, because they're all so nice I just thought it'd be nice to do one slightly different so this is our box. So I'm going to start off with the actual base of the box. Now, um, I have pre-prepared a lot of these papers because um, they take time to obviously prepare and just to save a little bit of time, but also to explain to you why um, I, I've done certain things that I've done. But equally, um, this requires, ideally, 12 by 12 cardstock. Now, we don't... Um, have the 12 by 12 car stock in all of our colorways so that's quite difficult sometimes to to have that to hand so I wanted to be able to create it from using um, I'm in the UK so we use a4 um, but equally um, I wanted to to be available to all markets so that we could also use imperial measurements now there are some adjustments that need to be made to the base and the lid for the imperial measurements purely because um, it, it's slightly shorter than our A4 cardstock here but it's easily adaptable so I'm going to talk you through that as I go. Um, I'm going to give you the measurements but I will also put them on screen so that you can see exactly what is what so that um, you understand sort of where we, we are with that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to cut two pieces of cardstock. These are identical. You cannot get the base from one piece, even a 12 by 12. So we've had to use a double layer, but that's fine because the bottle is quite heavy anyway. So it gives it that extra support. So this measures 11 and three quarter inches by seven and a half inches. Now for the UK market, we are just a whisker short of the 11 and three quarters. But the way it's been designed, it doesn't matter because we can still use the same measurements. It just means one end is fractionally shorter, but you don't see it once it's all put together. So that's absolutely fine. Now for the um, for the US paper size market, you are going to need to adjust it slightly. And you can do that by removing this 
section at the top here. Now I will talk you through it as we go so that hopefully it will become clear what is what. Um, so hopefully you'll understand that. Okay, so first of all, if I'm going to pop this into um, portrait format, so if this was in my trimmer in portrait, I would be scoring at four and a half inches and again at seven inches. So that is the same for both markets. Now, if I turn it so it's in landscape format, we are going to score at half an inch, eight and three quarter inch, and then at 11 and a quarter inch. But if you are in the um, US market, what we would need to do is to score this end at quarter inch, and then we'd need to score this end here at eight and a half, and then that would be 11 inches for your full length. So that's the only adjustment you need to make. I will put them on the actual screen, so hopefully that will make more sense. But equally, you can contact me if you're not sure um, on, on how I'm trying to explain it to you. OK, all the other parts inside are, are fine. We can fit them from our both sizes of cardstock. It's just the, the base and the top where we have to just adjust them very, very slightly. OK, so once we've done this, we need to cut both pieces so it looks like this. So I'm going to show you how to do that first of all, um, but I'm going to just score these initially so that you can see hopefully all the lines. OK. I'm just going to pop that one out of the way for a moment. So you can see we have um, two rectangles and we have this square in the corner here. So what I want to do is I'm going to cut up those score lines to that first score line there. Now, in the US market, you wouldn't have this end piece, so, but you would do exactly the same, just cut up these two side pieces here. OK, so I want to remove this section of the corner. And then what I want to do is to actually remove some of this. So this is creating a tab to stick the two corners together. So I've gone about half an inch. Um, you don't have to be precise and so you don't need to use a trimmer to do it. You can just use your scissors. It's literally to hold the two sections together. So that will look like that. Now, as I say, in the US market, you won't have this bit, but in the UK market, we're just going to remove those two corners. And I am very quickly just going to take um, a rubber, if I can find one to hand, just to remove those pencil marks um, that I put on there, just to talk you through it. Otherwise, I shall forget to do them, I'm sure. OK, so now we're at this end here. We need to remove this long rectangle from this end. So we're going to take it up to that first score line there. And we're going to create a little tab. And again here and here. OK, so once you're cut, your piece should look like that. So we've got this rectangle with three tabs and then we've got the large rectangle, a smaller one and then a tab on the end of that. OK, and you're going to cut both pieces identical. And then what's going to happen is these two large sections in the middle here are actually going to stick together. So this will be a double layer, so that will give us plenty of strength to hold that bottle inside, OK? So the first thing I need to do is just to add some glue. Now I use um, multi-purpose, the Tombow um, multi-purpose glue. I find this is best for box making purely because um, once it's dry, it does give you that really strong bond, whereas tape can sometimes dry out um, and perhaps not hold it as well. But you use whatever you're comfortable with. As I say, I tend to use wet glue for these types of jobs 
Okay, so I'm going to stick this onto the top, just making sure that it's all lined up. And once I'm happy it is, I'm just going to smooth that down. So I can quickly flip it over and make sure that's all stuck. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to make my box up. So these are my ends and these tabs are going to stick inside like so. So I need to do that on all four corners. Once it's stuck, I tend to just sort of lay it flat the best I can just to get a nice glued edge on it and do the same for as I say for all four corners okay so now that's all done you'll notice you've got these flaps here now um, again if you're using the imperial measurements we would have removed these two pieces so they won't sit they won't be there that will just be a straight edge but you will have these two pieces so you can glue these to the inside of your box now this is two purposes firstly it does add a little bit of strength to the edges of your box but secondly it's um just for aesthetics it's to make it look nice so that you don't have a raw edge of cardstock now i try to incorporate this into all my projects it's not always possible because sometimes the measurements are such that you just cannot um, enable that to happen so it's just a case of um I try and make it work if I can. If I can't, then, then I don't. Um, when I'm creating a project, I always start off with um, a flat drawing. So I'll have, um, I imagine the actual box itself as if it was opened out flat. And then I work on my measurements from there. I tend to have some scrap card or retired coloured card, which I use just to create um, my actual um, prototype unless I'm confident that my measurements are going to work first time sometimes they do sometimes they don't whoops okay so I'm just going to make sure that that's all stuck down really really nicely Okay, so at this stage your box is a little bit flimsy, um, but that's fine, that's how it should be. Um, once we've started to add all the inner parts to it, you'll, you'll understand how it will all sort of firm up and become nice and strong. I'm going to pop that to one side. So the next thing we need to do is to create the actual divider, which goes between the wine and the chocolates. And then we will actually put the inside pieces that will hold it in place, okay? So... The first thing we need to do is to cut some cardstock and I'm using the same colour so if you wanted to you could use coordinating colour it doesn't have to be the same um, I have used coordinating to make my inner pieces but for this I have um, used the same cardstock just to do the divider in the centre but as I say it's entirely up to you so the first piece this large piece here uh, this measures 10 and 3 quarter inches by 4 and a half inches. And I've scored down the centre line here at 2 and a quarter inches. And then I have also scored here. Uh, and this is at 8 and a quarter inches. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is these two rectangles on the end. I'm just going to cut up the centre to that first score line. So you'll end up with two flaps like this, okay? Now what I need to do is I need to trim one of these flaps. So I'm just going to bring in my trimmer. Now if you can imagine, these are going to actually fit in the end of your box. So one side will be your wine, one side will be your chocolates. But the chocolate side is slightly narrower than the wine side. So we just need to lose a little piece off the edge here. OK, so what I need to do is I need to ensure that this score line 
here. So I've pulled this flap out of the way. This score line has to be on the two inches, okay? So I'm actually going to be losing a half an inch off the end here. So your piece will then look like that, okay? So the next thing I need to do is to cut two further pieces. Now this one measures three inches by two and a quarter inches and then I have scored it at two and a half inches here. And then this one measures two and a half inches by two and a quarter inches and this one has been scored at two inches. So these basically replicate the other end and what we're going to do is attach these by creating two little flaps again. So these are going to attach to the other end of our divider. So all you need to make sure is that the two larger ones are together and the two smaller ones are together because they're going to split to create our divider. So I'm just going to add some glue to the flap here. Oops. And I just want to attach it to this side Again, this is because our cardstock isn't long enough to do this all in one length. So we need to just create the length by joining pieces together. So you can make boxes pretty much any size. Um, you just need to be creative on, on how you do that, really. Okay, so now they look like one big piece. They're joined like so. So I'm just going to flip it over. And where these pieces are in the centre, I need to glue this section together. So again, this is going to give us our strength, but it's also going to hold our box together nicely. So these two sections are not glued, just that centre piece there. Okay, so when it's done, it will look like that. So if I bring my box now back in, this is going to sit inside our box and it's going to be glued at either end. This will bow for a little while until we get everything in place, so don't worry. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, glue in one end. You don't need to worry too much about being precise with your glue on this part because it's literally just gluing into the end. So I just want to make sure that it's flush with the bottom of my box here. And then once I'm happy that it is, I can then just burn it down so it all glues in place. Okay. And I'm going to repeat for the other end, but I need to do these one at a time. So it's a little bit fiddly, but you just need to add some glue. As I say, you don't need to be too precise on this point. There we go. So again, I'm just going to make sure it's flush with the bottom and also flush with this side here. And once I'm happy it's in place, I can glue that. And then finally, for the other side. Okay. So that's now all in place. So already the box is starting to become a bit firmer. Um, as I say, when we get the insides in, this bowing will stop and it will all hold nicely in place. Okay, so I'm going to pop that to one side again for a moment. So the next thing we need to do is to actually create our wine dividers for the inside. So for this we need two pieces. Now I have used coordinating cardstock for this piece here. So this is Mossy Meadow. So again, if you prefer, you can use your colour that you've used for your actual box itself. Um, it's entirely up to you just how you 
sort of want to coordinate your colours really. Okay, so this first section here, this measures eight and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. And I have scored it at one inch, two and a quarter inches, three and a quarter inches, and four and a half inches. Okay, so that's that piece. And then you need this very small piece, which is one inch by three and a half inches. And I've scored this at one inch, one and a half, two and a half, and three inches. Now this is the section which basically forms the support for the neck of the bottle. So I'm just gonna join those pieces together just to create a little square. And I'll just pop that to one side to dry for a moment. That's, as I say, is the, just the little support for the neck of the bottle. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my box in. Now the box has two sections. It has a, a slightly smaller section and the large section, which is the wine section. So what I want to do is just to test this inside my actual box itself. Now I want it to be able to slide in and to be a nice snug fit, but I don't want it puckering on any edges. Now you might find, as I have done here, that you might just need to trim just a slither off of one end because it tends to get caught sometimes on the corners as I say, it is just a slither. You don't need to take much off it. Just make sure it fits nice and comfortably inside without too much sort of moving around, which it does. So that's absolutely fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some glue to one of the sections on one side. They're a mirror image, so it doesn't matter which way around you use it. And I'm going to make sure I'm on the right side and I want to just slot this in so that it sits at the bottom of our middle section. OK, so I'm going to slot it in, make sure it goes right the way in. And then I find sometimes the easiest way is just to fold this over. And just make sure that it sticks flush to that bottom piece. And then you can actually get your fingers in and just give it a little rub down and then you'll find that it will stick nicely to that edge. I find it easier to start with that middle edge because that is um, the floppier edge of the two. So it's nice to sort of kind of get that one in place first. Um, and then this one's a bit stronger here. So I'm gonna add glue now to this other side. Okay, I just need to be very careful how I pop this in because I need it to go right to the bottom before the glue hits the edge. So once it's in, again, make sure it's flush with the bottom and then pinch it very closely. At this stage, you can kind of manipulate the box a little bit. So don't be afraid to just sort of give it a little grab. I purposely haven't stuck any glue to the actual base piece because I wanted it to be able to sort of have a little bit of, of wiggle room in it once the bottle was in it. Okay, so now you can see that's all nicely secure and you'll start to feel that this now is firming up. This will look, um, you know, a lot stronger and feel a lot stronger to you. And then this little section here, I'm just going to make sure that where my join is, is on the end. And I'm going to pop that into the end of the box here. And this will just hold, as I say, the, the actual um, neck of the bottle so that it doesn't rock because it will rock slightly. So I'm going just close to the end. I'm not quite at the end, but just quite close there. So that is that part done. Okay, so far so good. So next we need to move on to the actual um, dividers for the chocolate. 
so again I have pre-cut these so that you can see how it is made and again we have to join some pieces because any cardstock is not going to be long enough for us so I don't know if you noticed in the original box if I just bring that in again that the actual chocolates are on like a ledge so they're raised up because I didn't want the chocolates to be down at the bottom I wanted them to be near the top so that they showed once um, once you opened the box so the first thing I need to do is to create what I've called the lift so that the piece that actually raises it up from the base plus again it gives us extra support so if I just quickly score these Again, in the coordinating cardstock, and this one measures 10 and a quarter inches by four inches wide. And then I have scored at every inch on every side. So it's, sorry, I rephrased that. I've scored at one inch on every side, on the four sides. And then what I want to do is I'm just literally going to remove those corners. So I'm not creating a box as such, I'm just creating um, a support. The chocolates aren't heavy, so it doesn't need to be overly um, strong. It's just literally to give it that sort of lift so the chocolates are raised off the bottom. Okay, so again, I'm just going to check it fits all nicely. Um, this will be a tighter fit and you might have to sort of wiggle it around a little bit because obviously this is fitting into whatever gaps left so to speak but it will go in you just need to manipulate it just a little bit yeah I think that's going to be fine once it once it's in so I'm just going to pull it out for a moment and what I want to do is to add some glue just on the bottom edge I'm not going notice I'm not gluing the actual piece itself because um, it, because it is a tight fit you'll end up getting glue down the whole edge of your box so I'm literally just on the bottom section just doing a couple of rows of glue just so that it will sit in and we can then get it to uh, glue to the sides so again just manipulating it in as I say it is a tight fit if you find it's really tight you can just trim a little sort of tapered edge on this long end and you'll find that that will just help it. You don't want much, just, just a little taper just so it will go in better. Oops, wrong side. Okay, so there you can see that's all fitted in nicely. I can just give it a little sort of squeeze on either side. I don't need it to be stuck solid because obviously this is um, just a support, but that little bit of glue in there will just hold it sufficiently enough so that it doesn't move. So that's our base piece. Now for the dividers. So you're going to need two pieces of, of cardstock two inches wide by ten and one eighth of an inch long so I'll do them separately so that you can uh, follow the measurements so you're going to need to score at one and three eighths of an inch two and three eighths of an inch three and three eighths of an inch four and three quarters five and three quarters six and three quarters eight and one eighth of an inch and nine and one eighth of an inch okay so that's ten and one eighth of an inch long by two inches wide okay and then you're going to need another section and this one is two inches wide again but this is five and three quarter inches and we're scoring at one inch two and three eighths of an inch three and three eighths and four and three eighths so again I'll put those on the screen so that you can 
um, pores and you can sort of see where they are so I'm just going to fold these now I'm I don't want to burnish these too hard I want these to be quite loose folds on them so I'm literally using my fingers just to burnish them down so the wider sections are the bases okay so then you have two inches which work as our divider then it's a flat one and then two inches flat one two inches so it will look like that once it's actually in our box now I don't glue any of this together all that's going to be glued is the base with the exception of our join so the one inch and the one inch are just going to glue those together now as you can see my um, one inch here is just slightly deeper so um, obviously I didn't uh, measure quite as well as I thought I had so I'm just going to trim a little bit off that that's better and then I'm going to glue those two sections together there I always like to check things as I go because sometimes if your score line is slightly out or your cut line is slightly out it can throw the whole thing so I just sort of test it as I go and then I can sort of manipulate it to to fit what I want it to do so there we go so that's our five sections so again as always I'm just going to test it I put it in the bottom and there we can see that's how it's going to fit okay so as I explained I only glued the center points of these so these bigger sections so I'm just going to add some glue again I don't need to go all over this is just to attach it to my base okay so you do have to be a little bit careful obviously because you've got wet glue on this but I tend to sort of hold it up and stick one end in first just make sure that it goes right to the very end there we go so once that one's stuck down, I then tend to do the other end. So I do exactly the same, make sure it's right to the end and stuck down. I'm then going to just push this center point down and just eyeball it. So I'm just literally just centering it roughly where I think the center is. Whoops. And as I see, these middle pieces the dividers themselves are not glued together so they will be a little sort of gap between where they form and so you just need to just using my bone folder here just to make sure that everything is stuck where I want it to be so there we go so that's our dividers so if I grab some spare Ferrero Rocher, I have spares because I don't actually like these. So my husband does. So. <laughs> so there are spares until he finds the box. So there we go. We can see that they will all just sit inside here. Now, the reason I didn't close these pieces up was because, again, I wanted it to be a little bit more flexible. I wanted it to, um, if you had slightly larger chocolates, it could sort of move around a little bit. But also because um, the exact measurements to get this absolutely precise, um, you'd be talking like sort of a section of a one sixteenth of an inch and uh life's too short I, that's my view so um so i've literally just sort of done it so that it, it will sit there it's a divider and that that's it and i'm actually going to grab the bottle of wine from the original one and then we can see that also that will sit in place so there we go so that's the actual base of our box complete so now what we need to do is to make our lid so again, I've pre-cut these pieces and these are made in exactly the same way as our base was made. So we've got two sections. 
So if I give you the measurements quickly for those. Move my chocolates out of the way. So this measures 11 and a quarter inches by seven and one sixteenth of an inch. Now, again, if you're using the US paper size, then you will need to adjust it again and you'll need to remove that one end. So again, if, um, if I hold this up the correct way, you'll be losing this section off the top here. But it's, it's not a problem, as I say, I will put the proper measurements up and your additional score lines that you would need to make um, for using the US paper sizes. So I'll put those on the screen so you can see those. So I'm gonna cut this in exactly the same way. Remember, I just, oops, cut these score lines here. This is the section where we cut sort of half an inch. Okay, and then this section is just off the end. And then finally this section here. Okay, so if I just burnish all those score lines again. If you wanted to, you could decorate your top at this point. Um, it's entirely up to you. Um, it's, it's quite easy to decorate once it is made up. Um, and sometimes I prefer to do it afterwards because then I can really sort of um, see what it looks like in 3D as opposed to a flat piece of card. So, okay. So if you recall, we're going to stick these two large middle sections together. So it's unfortunate that it, it won't come from one piece of cardstock, but um, the bottle is quite heavy, so at least this does give it some reinforcement, and we know that it's it's going to be really secure and really safe. Plus, we're going to have um, some more on the top of here as well. So again, just making sure that it's all nice and square. This is even more important on the top section because obviously you're going to see that. I just like to run my bone folder where those joins are just so that they sort of join up nicely. And then again, the ends to form my box. So I'm just going to make sure they're all glued down and then glue these edges inside as we did before. Okay, so that's our lid made. Now what I want to do, I'm just going to remove these just while I decorate my box so that they're not rolling all over the place. I'm just going to pop my lid on and hope that it fits it is um it is a snug fit so you know don't don't be alarmed it, it is meant to be quite snug and you just need to once you've had it on once or twice it, it will fit really nicely so just make sure it's nice and square and then you'll find it will sit beautifully on top so it really is a nice snug um, fit that the box is not going to come undone if you drop it or whatever um, I mean shaking it it's not even moving it so there we go so now we need to decorate it so as I say I have pre-cut all my pieces so that you can see um, what I'm using 
Now, um, again, this is the brightly gleaming paper. It's just absolutely beautiful and I just love it. Now, on my original box, I'll bring that back in, I used um, copper foil. So this is the copper foil that's in the papers and this was um, just the plain copper foil. I only had one sheet of that left, so um, I have had to use something else. Now, this is one of my favourites at the moment. This is in the... Um, uh, mini catalogue at the moment and it's brushed metallic so it's it's got copper golden sort of a champagne color but they're actually um got a brushed effect on them so they're not as foily not so not so shiny um but they're really really beautiful um i actually prefer them i think they're absolutely gorgeous so this is going to pop on top so if i give you the measurements for these um the copper is seven and fifteen sixteenths by four and a quarter inches okay and then the dsp on here is seven and eleven sixteenths and four inches wide so i'm going to stick that on first actually no i'm not nearly did it wrong <laughs> What I'm going to do is leave that till last because what I want to actually do is, um, as you can see on my original, I tucked my ribbons underneath. So I'm not going to stick that on just yet. That one's going to stick to one side. I am going to stick the sides on, however. So on these corners where your joins are, I just use my bone folder and it just rounds those corners, just makes them look a little bit neater because obviously that's where our joins are. There we go. Okay, so for the long strips, the copper section is seven and fifteenth sixteenths by one and three quarters. And the DSP is seven and eleven sixteenths by one and a half inches. So that's our long strip. So I'll stick those on first. You'll notice I've made them a little bit deeper than long. So you'll have a slightly bigger gap at either end. But I did this because I wanted it to match my top. So um, it works really nicely on the edges to have that little bit deeper pattern. Um, and then it also gives you an equal corner. So these edges here match these. Um, so that's why I did it that way. Um, you can obviously adjust them if you prefer to have them a little bit shallower decoration is entirely up to you again this is the same measurements this isn't the long piece let's say it's quite easy to um, glue this once once it's actually made so um, I tend to do that now for the shorter pieces, um, the copper is four and a quarter inches by one and three quarters and the DSP is um, four inches by one and a half. These foil sheets, they tend to um, take a little bit of sticking. They've got a slightly shiny back to them. So you just need to make sure that they are sticking nice and flat. You can always go back to them and give them a um, another rub once, once they've uh, had a chance to settle. And because they're shiny, they sometimes kind of move around a little bit if you're not too careful. So it's best to let them get their first adhesion and then you can have a fiddle. Okay, so okay, just make sure that sticks down nicely there. Okay, so that's all the sides stuck in place. Let's so say I will go around and give them another sort of rub just to make sure that they're stuck nicely. 
and then this is obviously going to go on top but we need to create our decoration first so that's what I'm going to do now so to create my decoration I've used the stitch stars dies oh that's difficult to say um, and I have cut various stars as you can see from the same copper foil that I used for the actual um, embellishments on the paper so this is the largest star and this is just a selection of um, two or three of the smaller ones I can just see I've got a few little pieces still left in those I just got a little pokey tool here I'm just going to get rid of those there we go so they'll be ready to go once um, I'm done and I'm using the coordinating stamp set that goes with this set um, and this is called Christmas Gleaming so I've used these three baubles and this greeting here and I'm using the coordinating colours so we've got Pretty Peacock, Night of Navy and Mossy Meadow so I'm going to start off um, with one of the baubles and I'm going to ink this one in Night of Navy. Now this is quite a solid um, stamp, so you do need to just make sure it's really nicely inked. And then I'm gonna pop it onto what is thick Whisper White. Now the reason I've chosen thick is because I wanted it to be quite robust so that it didn't get squashed, um, because obviously the box is quite robust, so I want I want my embellishments to be as well. So that's my blue one. I'm then going to take um, another one and I'm going to stamp this in Pretty Peacock. So again, I'm just inking it nicely. This isn't quite as solid, this one, but you still want to make sure you get a really nice sort of covering on it. So I'm just gonna leave a little gap because I'm gonna punch those out in a second. So that's that one. And then finally, Mossy Meadow, I'm gonna take the slightly smaller one. And again, just make sure you give it a really, really nice inking. I think my ink pad actually needs a re-ink, so I'm just going around the edges a bit more where it's a little bit juicy. There we go. And then I'm going to stamp that onto there. So that's my three baubles stamped. clear the decks a little bit the last thing I want to stamp is my greeting here um, this time I'm going to do it in Pretty Peacock I did it in Night of Navy on the original because it was more navy based but this one is more peacock so again this is a solid stamp so really make sure you give it a really nice inking just hesitate for a minute when you stamp it and you'll find that it should come out nicely Okay, so that's the stamping done. What I did do on the originals here was I actually coloured in the tops of my baubles as well. I think that just adds a little something to it. So I'm going to do that again. Okay, so for this I'm using our stamping blends. These are our alcohol markers. So again, in the coordinating colours. So I'm going to start off with um, the dark navy one here. So I'm going to start off by adding a little bit of the light Night of Navy and then going to go in with the dark. Normally I would do this the other way around. I'd start with my dark and go in with my light but because these are quite small areas I want the blending to be quite minimal so I'm just added the light first which enables me just to add in the dark without it being too obvious if that makes sense I don't want to be moving the ink around too much okay so that's that one done I'm then going to take the um, pretty peacock and again I'm going to start the same I'm going to do it in the light first so I've got a nice cover in then I'm going to add in some dark and I just realized I didn't do the top of the actual bauble there I'll go back and do that in a second and again I just want to 
blend those slightly. I go back in with that dark one just to do the top of my bauble there. I'm then going to take uh, Mossy Meadow. So I'm going to do the same again. This is particularly small area, so I do need to be a little bit careful. I don't want this to bleed. So again, I've oops, started off with the light, just add in dark over the top. And then another little bit of light. I'm not going to blend that anymore, that piece, because that is quite tiny and I really don't want it to bleed. Okay, so now they're done. I'm going to take the coordinating punches. So these are the, um, these match perfectly with our baubles here. So I'm just going to punch those out first. And what I actually want to do as well is to punch myself two plain ones. I'll explain these in a moment. And then going to take the small one and do exactly the same. And again, I want a spare of the small. Okay, so that's all those done. And then just gonna cut that greeting out. And I want to cut it quite close to those edges. So I'm literally going to go right up to the edge. You can pop this in your trimmer if you prefer. Um, I'm quite happy just to do it by hand, but if you want to do it, you can do it in your trimmer. Okay, so that's our greeting ready when we're ready for it. So now what I want to do is just to take one of our pricking mats um, and a pokey tool. Um, I apologise, this is not my stamping up pokey tool. I'm not quite sure what I've done with that at the moment. So what I want to do is to punch holes into the top of my ball balls. Now this hole needs to be big enough for my ribbon to go through. So once I've poked through, I'm just giving it a little wiggle just to give me that extra bit of space. Hopefully my ribbon will come through nicely. Okay, so I am using um, our navy, this thin navy ribbon, which is really pretty, it's really soft, um, and also some of our copper ribbon now this is from um the gilded autumn um suite so this isn't actually match doesn't actually match this suite um officially but it does work really nicely with it and likewise with this one um i believe this is from playful patterns but i couldn't swear to that but um again it's not specifically for this but it actually coordinates really well so that's what we're looking for so the first thing I want to do is to decide where my baubles are going to go. So how I'm going to hang them once they're hanging up. So again, I want this one to be my prominent one because this is the colour of my cardstock. So I want that one to be um, the most prominent. So that's the one that's going to have the copper thread through it, or ribbon through it, I should say. So I've just threaded a piece through to the back of my bauble and I want to if I bring in my actual piece these are going to stick sort of sort of here-ish really so I want to give myself a little bit extra to play with okay now the reason that I have cut these extra baubles is again because I want it to be sturdy and because I want it to be really robust with the actual um, the box itself. I'm just going to add some glue she says. Okay let me grab another one hold on. So 
So I'm just going to add some glue to my bauble. Okay, and what I want to do is making sure that my ribbon is flat, which it will be in a second. I just want to stick my spare bauble over the back. So I'm sandwiching that ribbon between the two pieces. It means it will be really robust, it will be really strong, and my ribbon will be held in place really strong as well. Okay, so now I've done that, I want to repeat that for my other two. There we go, so that's my three baubles ready. Move that out of the way. So the first thing I want to do is to arrange my star. So I put this, it was just sort of below halfway. So actually the, these little arms of the star were sort of roughly on the halfway mark, but again, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You just, you glue it wherever you wish. Decoration is the, uh, the creative bit. As I say, remember that the back of the foil is, is a little bit shiny, so just bear that in mind. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I want to add some 3D foam, our dimensionals, to the reverse of my baubles. So I want to position these sort of where I want them to be. Now, um, obviously the ribbons I want to go kind of in order and I want them to sort of collect at the top of my piece of card here so they're sort of all dangling together really so I'm going to stick this one first because I think this is is the important one because then everything else can work around that okay so I'm just going to position this roughly here there we go I then want this one to maybe just go behind this one very slightly so again I want my ribbons to meet in the middle so I'm just going to make sure that that's sort of at the right angle let's again just line it up Lovely. And then finally, the little one. And again, I'm just going to have this one a little bit higher, but tucked behind that ribbon there. And just make sure that it goes up. There we go. Okay, so now they're all in position. Excuse the pitter patter of tiny feet. That's my little doggy just coming in to check I'm still here. Okay, so now I've done that, what I tend to do is to use either some tape or I'm using our stamping seal here, just to run over the, the top. I'm just gonna move those ribbons out of the way. Just to run over this top, I say, cause it's shiny. <laughs> it, there we go. Okay, so I've just run that over the top really literally so that I can just glue my ribbons in place and I know they're going to be secure. And then I'm just going to repeat for these other two. So I have been a little bit generous with my ribbon here, but I'd rather that than not have enough. So then I'm just going to trim those ends. I just want to just make it all neat really so that it, it sort of fits nicely. And I'm actually going to stick this now to my box top. I find it's a lot easier to do the next part once it's on top. So I'm going to add some glue to the back. Just position that on top. I need to add a tiny bit of glue just to these end pieces when I'm finished. There we 
we go so that's that part done now I want to add my greeting so as before I'm sort of going to stick it off the side here like this so I want to stick this part flat and I want this part to be on a dimensional so I've conveniently got one I cut in half earlier which I'm going to add to that end and some glue just to this end here just so I can position it half and half again just make sure that that's straight okay so the next thing I did is I just glued my stars in various places so um, these are quite difficult to stick down I will have to say because they're obviously quite fine um, and they do slippy slidey around a bit so you just need to persevere with them but they look nice once they're on Okay, so the last thing I want to do is now to add my bow. Um, I just want to make sure those are really stuck down well so that I don't pull them out. Um, so I've cut two lengths of ribbon, which I'm just going to feed underneath the bauble pieces. And then I'm going to tie it into a knot. Now, um, because these ribbons are different weights, they do fight against each other a little bit so just bear that in mind and I just want to tie a nice tight knot so that it sits nicely and then I always turn my project upside down um, I don't know why but I always find I get a better bow when I do it that way so I'm just going to tie this off into a bow as I say because these ribbons are different weight they will take a little bit of manipulating just to get them to tie it into a nice bow so I've tied it once and then I'm just pulling the ends through and then if I'm happy I can just tighten that bow I just need to trim the ends of my ribbon to the length that I'd like them I think that one's okay so there we go so if I open this up once again as I say once you've opened it three or four times it does open a lot better so that's the two boxes completed um, I hope you enjoyed that um, I certainly enjoy creating it and I just want to thank again the um, creating kindness design team for inviting me along I thoroughly enjoyed making it um, it was really good fun and I hope you enjoyed it too and I hope to see you again sometime. Take care. Bye.